Hey guys, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking serverless functions in Node. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to use a serverless function using Vercel, which was previously the Now company. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a simple API that we can interact with, and we're going to show you how to deploy it, as well as anything else you might need. And of course, we're gonna use Postman to verify that we're actually doing something. So let's get started. So as you can see, we've got a nice simple terminal with an empty project. So first things first, let's go ahead and do npm init, and we'll just hit the Y button so that we don't have to type anything in. So now we have our package ready, we're gonna to have to install something for it to actually work. So the package that you wanna install is going to be named for sale slash no. So it's npm install at resale slash node. And then we're going to do save dev because we don't actually need to use it any other time. And that will install the one small amount of packages that we need. So now we have the basics. So what we need to do is create an API folder and this will tell Vercel where to look for our API. And then inside of that, we're going to create one file and we're just going to call it users. And that users.js file is going to contain what we want it to do, right? So we want to be able to um, get some users and we also want to be able to post a user. So now we have the basic outline and framework. Now we actually have to write some code. So the way that this works is you have a single module.export that takes a request and sends a response. And that's it. Uh, apart from this layout, and this can be for any API method, right? So maybe you have users and then you have... Um, let's say locations, and then you have another API called movies. Like it's just one file for each API route. So this would be localhost 3000 slash API slash users. At this point, we can actually just write some code. So the first thing we wanna do is actually say, if the request method, this basically says whatever the request method is, um, we want to know. So if it's a get, we're going to return something else. We'll do something else. Essentially, this is the quickest and easiest way to do it. Otherwise, you'd have to write uh, an API function called get user, an API function called add user, an API function called delete user. You can do all of these things just in this users route. So now for this one, we'll just send a response back. So we'll do res JSON, because we know it's gonna be a JSON. And now we can respond with whatever we want. So let's do a name, and then we'll put my name in here. And then we'll do location. And we'll do North Carolina. So that's one. And then we'll do a next one. And we'll put another name in here. And we'll call it George. And we'll say that that location is, I don't know, New Jersey. So now our code is basically ready to test. So before we do anything else, let's go ahead and save this. And then let's type Vercel. Now this is on the assumption that you've already set up your Vercel. Um, to do that, you just have to sign up and then install the Vercel uh, CLI, which is available on their website. And then you can hit Vercel. And it will ask you, are you ready to deploy this? Press yes. And it will ask you the scope, which is me. And do you want to an existing project? You're going to click no. And then it's going to ask you for your project name. So we're going to keep this as uh, this. 
and my code is located there. Okay, so once that's done, and it should just take a few seconds, you'll get a link here to ta change any of your settings, etc. But what we want to do is actually do this. And what this does is it just launches this to localhost 3000, which is what everybody's used to. So if we click on this and we go here, what we get is like this weird page, right? That says index of, and here is basically our project structure. Now, if we go to API and type users, we actually get the API response that we want. Now, the first problem here is, well, nobody wants to look at um, a screen of this is what it looks like for our project structure if someone was to hit the API, right? So imagine if somebody came along and said, oh, this is super cool. Like, I'm going to go and check out James's new API. And then they got hit with your project structure. They can see all of your code. They can essentially do whatever they want. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to add a little bit of logic here um, that's out of the box. And that's the facel JSON file. And in here, we can actually set some JSON and some routes and some other stuff so that we can tell it exactly what we want it to do. So first, we're actually going to tell uh, through the routes that we want the source, which is essentially what they request uh, when they hit your API. So we want the standard response to always be this. And this will just take our API and it will just do the standard response. So this will do the get request now. So if we go ahead and save and reopen this and refresh, now you can see by default, whenever we hit the standard localhost 3000, we actually get our response. So another cool feature that you're going to want to use is we're actually going to tell what is allowed and what is not through our API. So we're going to tell that if someone tries to hit anything other than these two methods, that we're just going to not allow them to do it. So you can use the methods. And inside of that, you can do an array, and then you can set it to whatever you want. So we'll do post, because we're going to allow someone to do a post. And we're also going to allow you to do the get. And while we're here, we'll just set the destination um, to here. Yep. And what we'll actually do here is if we change this to just slash users, now what will happen when we do slash users is now we get the response. Instead of having to do API slash users, now you can just do slash users. So at this point, what we've done is told it, hey, if it's a post or a get, we can totally handle those, but any other type, no thank you. So we should be good to go now. So let's go ahead and test out as in a post. So to add the post, it's going to be just in this else right here. And we're just going to take two things from the request body, the name and the location. And we're going to set that to the request body. And what we're going to do is we're just going to res respond back. As long as they send that stuff, we're going to say stars user created. Come up, name, come up, location, and then put one of there. Oh, made a mistake here somewhere, and I cannot see it. Else, oh, I see the problem. We accidentally opened the brace there. Okay, 
So now we have this, we can go ahead and test our post using Postman, which we have right here. And the post is just the body with the name and the location and then the route. So we actually can test this first here and say, oh, status user is created, Stephen, and his location is London. We can also test this without the API, and we also get the same response. So what happens if I try and delete? It says, page cannot be found, not found, because that's the default 404 for this. If this was available as a route, but we had dis just said in this for sale that this is not allowed, we'd get a different error message. So that's the end of the video. Really simple stuff. It's great to be able to just do serverless functions. Very small amount of code needed to just do a simple API. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like. If you want to see more content from me, make sure you subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Until next time, see ya!